Hello everyone, welcome to another Python game making for beginners tutorial. Um, if you haven't seen my other videos in this series, be sure to check those out because we're going to start building on, because we're going to build upon the concepts that we learned in those videos. So be sure to check those out if you haven't already. Also, while you're here, hit the like buttons and subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. So in the last video, uh, we covered string variables or string data types um, in, in, in a pretty fair amount of depth. And today we are going to do Boolean data types. So as I said in, in the uh, earlier video, Booleans just return, um, Boolean variables are just a true or false value. So to review, remember that when you use a Boolean data type, the true or false has to be capitalized. If it's lowercase, it doesn't work. So true or false has to be capitalized. And we're gonna start uh, learning how to compare different statements to determine whether they're true or false. And then using those variables, uh, those Boolean variables to take different pathways within our program. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, we're gonna go over mathematical comparison operators. So we probably, uh, you probably remember doing these back in elementary school. These are the less than and greater than and equal to. So whenever we're doing equal to, we can't use an equal sign because we use that to assign a variable. So instead, we're going to use a, if I can find it, there we go. We use a double equal sign. So two equal signs next to each other with no space checks if two statements are equal to one another. Um, we can also do not equal to by using an exclamation point followed by a uh, followed by an equal sign. We can also check less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. So let's try some of these in action. I'm going to say one is equal to one. This will return true because one is equal to one. But if I try to say one is equal to two, this will return false. Likewise, if I try to do one is less than one, I will get false. One is less than two, however, will return true. I can also do one is less than or equal to true, or to two rather, that will give me true. One is less than or equal to one will give me, oops, I accidentally put a space there. One is less than or equal to one gives me true. One less than or equal to zero will give me false. There we go. And the same thing with a greater than. I don't have to go through all those. I think you pretty much uh, pretty much get the picture on those. Um, oh, I'll try one more. Let's do one is not equal to one. And of course, that will give me false because one is, in fact, equal to one. Um, so one interesting thing about these is that you can also use these to check whether or not strings or Booleans are equal to each other. For instance, if I do Adam is equal to Adam it gives me true, but Adam is equal to capital Adam, it gives me false. So case matters in these sorts of things and will only return true if they are completely identical to each other. I can even put like a space on the end and it will still give me false because those technically are not exactly equal to one another. Um, you can also use greater than or less than uh, when comparing two strings to one another, and it will tell you whether or not they um, one occurs before the other one alphabetically. So if I do A is less than B, oh, I'm sorry, I got to put that in as a string. A is less than B. It gives me true because A comes before B alphabetically. But if I do B is less than A, it gives me false. So same thing with names. If I do um, Adam is less than Alan, that is true because again, um, Adam comes before Alan alphabetically. So those are different, uh, the different comparison operators. And I do want to talk about now how to use those in order to make choices in our program using if else statements. So for this next one, I'm going to go up to file and choose a new file. So now this is going to open up a new window where we can actually type a program. This is not the same thing as the interactive shell. This is more like a text editor, but we can use this to write a program or write several snippets of code and then run them all together. We can also do this in idle, but it's a little bit easier, I think. It makes a little bit more sense doing this 
um, in its in its own window in, in the actual IDE. So for instance, I can do the same thing over here that I would normally do, um, but again, it's not going to give me my variables back. Like if I call a variable name equals Adam and then name, like it's not going to call that automatically. But if I run this by, you can either go up to run and then run module or just hit the F5 key. Um, it will ask you to save it, so let's do that. And I'm just going to call this, um, actually let's just put it on the desktop to make things easy. We'll call this tutorial, save, there we go. And then you notice over here, it runs my output at the bottom of my interactive shell, but it didn't actually say anything because all I did is I named the variable, then I called the variable. But remember, like I said, um, when we did the print function, that it will only print something that, to the console if you tell it to. So instead of name, let's say print name. Now, if we run that, we're gonna save it again. And now it prints the name to the console. So again, everything works pretty much the same as the interactive shell, um, just a little bit different. It won't give us immediate feedback. We've actually got to run our software, use the print function if you want it to uh, print something to the console. All right, so we are going to try um, what's called an if else statement. So basically this says, if this condition is true, do this code or run this code. Else, if that is not true, run this code instead. And the syntax is going to be if condition. And then we're going to put a colon and then enter. And notice after I put a colon, it automatically indents. This is called a coding block. So coding blocks are a very, very important concept in many programming languages, pretty much every programming language as far as I know. Um, if you come over from another programming language, such as a C-based language like Java or C++ or C Sharp, or even something like JavaScript, they typically use curly braces. But in um, Python, we don't use curly braces, we use indention. So basically, if this condition is true, then it's going to run all of this code that's indented. Um, so if condition is true, um, run this code basically is what's going to happen. And then we're going to say else. So that means if that condition isn't true, we're going to run this code. And uh, that also has to be indented. Then after that, if you want, you can run more code and make sure it's all the way indented over to the left. So the if statement, if it's true, will run everything here. If it's not true, then it'll default to the else statement and it'll run everything that's indented here. And then when that's done, then it will go through the rest of the program. So let's try something. Let's say, uh, let's create two number variables. Let's create num1 equals one and num2 equals two. And let's say, uh, if num1 is less than num2, oops, make sure I have those declared correctly. If num1 is less than num2, which it is currently, print num1 is less than num2. So if you need a refresher on what I'm doing with this string formatting, be sure to refer to my earlier video on string formatting. I'll link to that above as well. So if num1 is less than num2, we're going to print num1 is less than num2. Else, if that is not true, we're going to print num1 is not less than num2. And then after that, we're going to print end of program, just so we can see that it's gonna to jump to that when it's the end. And again, on this one, we have to make sure that the if statement, everything in that coding block is indented. For the else statement, same thing, everything is indented and then the end of program is not indented. So this last line is going to run regardless of how this uh, if statement turns out. So what should happen when I run this is it will evaluate if num1 is less than num2, that will evaluate to true because one is less than two and it's going to print 
num1 is less than num2, then it's going to jump right to the end. It's going to skip that else statement. Okay, so let's run that. And it prints one is less than two, end of program. Exactly what we expected. Now let's try this. What if we wanted to test several different conditions? So right now we're saying if this condition is true, run this or else run this other thing. No matter what else happens, run this other code. But let's say we wanted to check for several different conditions. Then we use an extra statement called L if. This is else if in other programming languages. So if this first condition is true, run this code. L if this other condition is true, run this code. And we can have pretty much as many L ifs if we want. I think there is a limit on that, but it's not a limit you're ever likely to hit. <laughs> um, so we don't have to worry about that for right now. So let's say if num1 is less than num2, print num1 is less than num2. L if, so this one needs a condition, unlike the else statement, that one runs by default. That one does not need a condition, this one does. So L if num1 is greater than num2, print, as you might imagine, we're gonna print num1 is greater than num2. L if num1 is equal to num2, print num1 is equal to num2. There we go. So now, if I were to run that right now, the exact same thing would happen as the last one. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. So it gets to that first statement, that evaluates to true, so it prints that line. But what if we swapped these? Let's change that to two and then one. So now when it runs, num1 is less than num2 is going to evaluate to false. So it's going to check the next statement. L if num1 is greater than num2, which it is, that's going to evaluate to true, print that statement, then jump to the end. So let's try that. There we go. And just as we expected, two is greater than one, end of program. And then let's do one more thing. Let's set these equal to one another. So now they're both one. So this time num1 is less than num2 will evaluate to false. So it'll skip to the second one. Num1 is greater than num2. That will evaluate to false. L if num1 is equal to num2, print num1 is equal to num2. That will evaluate to true and that'll print out our, our answer and then it'll print into program. Let's try that. There we go, and just as we expected, one is equal to one, end of program. All right, that is pretty much the ins and outs of if, elif, else statements. So on this one, I generally like to end my statements with an else just to catch any cases that I may not have thought of. With something this simple, like we're not going to have anything under than less than, greater than, or equal to, like that is gonna evaluate to true pretty much no matter what happens, as long as you're using you know uh, the correct variables in place. Um, but you could throw in an else statement and say print, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> there we go. And I can't think of a way that we can make that evaluate. But again, you can put as many else if you want. You don't have to put an else at the end, but you can. And that's generally what I like to try to do. So like I said, that is pretty much if elif else statements. You can do that with any of our operators we used before. You can use less than equal to, greater than equal to, not equal to. That all works pretty much the same way. All right, and the very last thing that we're going to do today is we're going to introduce one more data type called lists. And lists technically is not a data type. It's actually a data collection or a collection type. So a collection, as you might guess, is a collection of data or it's um, a data structure, I think is what it's called in, uh, uh, in the correct parlance. Let me go ahead and start a fresh idle window real quick before we get back into this. Close that. There we go. All right, we'll just start, start a new. There we go. Alrighty then. So like I said, lists are a data structure. It's a way of structuring data together. Um, so lists can contain any of our data types that we've learned and even some that we haven't learned. You can even have a list of lists. One of the really cool things about lists is you can mix data types. So you can have a list that has ints, floats, variable, uh, uh, booleans, um, um, 
um, strings, whatever you want. And the way that we declare a list as a variable is um, the same way we did before. We're just going to say, I'm going to say list equal, actually, it doesn't like that, never mind. I'm going to say num list equals, and then we're going to put it inside of square brackets on your on your keyboard. These should be the same key as the curly brackets right in between your enter key and backspace key, somewhere in that general area. And we're just going to create a list of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and just for illustrative purposes, let's put six in there as a string. And that's our num list. Boom, there it goes. So we can call that and it gives it back to us, puts that six in quotes, just so we know that that one technically is a string. So another cool thing about lists is that unlike strings, lists are mutable, meaning that they can be changed in place. You can change a string without completely dumping it out and loading, or you can change a list without completely dumping the variable and loading a new variable in. And there are different functions or methods that we can use in order to do that. For instance, two of the uh, uh, most useful list methods are, um, are the methods that add items to a list and remove items to a list from a list. So let's say we wanted to get rid of that six that's a string and instead replace that with a six that's a number variable. We're going to do, and just like uh, the methods we did before, we're going to have data type. So in this case, it's gonna be a list, but data type dot method parentheses argument and remember we may or may not need an argument depending on the method that we are calling so for this one our data type is going to be a list we're going to do num list dot remove and then we're going to put in the value that we want removed in brackets Oh, I don't know what I did. Sorry about that. I had a minor, uh, minor uh, uh, type error there. Um, so we're not going to use brackets. This is a uh, method, so we have to put that in parentheses. We are going to use brackets for something else, though. There we go. Dot remove, and we're going to put that value in parentheses. There we go. So now when I call num list, that six is gone. And let's say that we wanted to put that six back in, but we wanted to put it in as an integer instead of as a string. We're gonna add it to it. Now, the name of this method is an add, but it's called append. And append specifically adds a value to the end of the list. Uh, so num list dot append, and then in parentheses, we're going to put six. And now when we call num list, there we go. Now we have six back in there, but this time it's as an integer instead of as a string. All right, and one more thing that we'll go over is how to get a list item by index. So we kind of did this before with the dot format method. Be sure to refer to that video if you need a refresher on how that works. But um, whenever we create a list, basically every item in that list has an index number that's automatically assigned to it. They are sequential numbers, again, starting with zero and then going all the way up to the top number of the list. So this one will, so one is going to be index zero, two is going to be index one, two, three, four and finally index five. So if I wanted to call one of those values by index, I would say num list, then we're gonna use square brackets, zero. So that's going to call item zero, which is going to be one. There we go. And if I wanted to call the last number, I would say num list five, and it would call that one. All right, and you can use lists, even calling specific items by index and in pretty much all of the other things that we've done. For instance, I can print num list and it will print it to the console. I can print num list by index and it will just print that specific index. I can even do math num list zero plus num list index one and it'll give me one plus two, which equals three. Um, so like I said, pretty much anything that we've done before, we can do by calling these lists, calling them as an index, doing different things like that. So that about brings it to uh, brings us to the end of this particular video. Of As always, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. 
And again, for the coding challenge on this, just take these different concepts, play around with them, try um, creating your own lists, calling things by index, doing math with index, and uh, by calling an, um, an item by its index number, anything that we've done before, just get into that idle interactive shell, just play around, see what you can figure out. And until then, we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.